metals are receiving a lot of attention these days. Tell me why we should be paying attention to nickel. Oh, good morning, Holly. That's a good question. Nickel is an important component in lithium ion batteries because it is the, the part of a cathode that holds the electrons that are released through, the, uh, uh, through lithium into the anode. So nickel is something that people are looking at because it can hold more atoms than other metals, which gives lithium ion batteries and EVs the range that they're looking for. Can you talk about EV battery production in North America versus what's happening in Europe and China? Yeah, absolutely. So EV battery production in North America is very limited. Aside from uh, Tesla and Panasonic, the Gigafactory that they have, there's, there's no real significant EV battery production in North America because North America has been a little bit late in adopting EVs aside from Tesla. China is the world leader in EV battery production, and I believe they, they produce 60 or 65% of all the EV batteries in the world. And Europe has really started to accelerate their EV battery production because uh, European countries have adopted this um, carbon neutral, no, no internal combustion engine policy fast. So a lot of companies are starting to invest in EV battery production in Europe. So really, you've got China the leader and Asia the leader, and you've got Europe coming up very quickly, and they're installing capacity. And I think the United States, North America is probably the third, third in line, but I expect that the U.S., with their announcements, will probably start ramping up their production capacity too. If HPAL projects have poor economics at current prices, why are the Chinese still building them? Well, that's a, that's a great question, Holly. I think the Chinese have a different economic view of uh, supply than we do in the Western world. The Chinese view uh, security of supply more importantly than economics, and they have access to very cheap capital. So they're not looking at internal rates of returns like we are in Western Canada or Western world, and they're looking more at security of supply. They want to get their nickel at a fixed price to feed their EV industry. And we talked about, you know, China being the leader in battery production, they need the raw material. And this is very similar to what they did for stainless steel. When China took the lead in stainless steel production, they locked up a lot of nickel in the form of nickel pig iron plants, where they had cheap investment and they got the nickel at a fixed price. They're doing the same thing now. They're not looking at the economics. They're not looking at selling the nickel on the market like uh, Western world is. They're looking at securing the nickel at a fixed price to feed their industry and they'll make their profit on the final product whether it be the battery or the car so that's their difference in how they view it they're very strategic in long term and they don't look at short-term economics how exactly do you plan on being the first carbon neutral nickel mine and how would this impact the economics of turnigan oh thanks holly so Turnigan has an advantage in with its location in northern BC. It's close to hydroelectric power in a relative sense. And northern BC has an abundance of hydroelectric power, which is very low in carbon generation, CO2 generation. So we plan to access uh, hydroelectric power to our site. It is going to be expensive. It's going to impact our capital cost, but we believe it's an investment worthwhile in order for us to achieve carbon neutrality. That's part of the equation. The other part of the equation is the material, the resource that Turnigan has. It's a sulfide, nickel sulfide material that is high in silicates. And, and this is unique to Turnigan and some other mines around the world that have demonstrated this. We expect that when we mine this material and liberate the nickel sulfide for our product, the remaining material will be a silicate material, which is very reactive to carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And what we're, what we're seeing and what Dr. Greg Dippel from UBC is proving for us is that these silicate materials absorb CO2 from the atmosphere and they turn into carbonate materials, carbonate materials in our tailings. They, they absorb a lot of CO2 and that CO2 is locked up for geological timescales. So we're talking about hundreds of millions of years that the CO2 will be locked up. So that's how we plan on achieving carbon neutrality.